Hi everyone and let's continue our journey and we are going to talk about the core syntax of Svelte.js in this video and we are going to use this sandbox because I can write the code and we can see the output in the right hand side so it's easy and we don't need to switch different screens okay so we have already discussed a lot about Svelte.js now we are talking about the basic fundamentals which covers the core syntax of the Svelte.js how the component communicates, how to import the components, how to pass the props, all those things. How to write the DOM events, component events and all those things. So in this example what we are doing is we have index.js. This is our app component which we are bootstrapping and inside app.svelte we are importing the button component. So you write the component. This button component can be as complex as you want. This is a basic reactive example where you are clicking on to this button and it is increasing the counter because you are just increasing the count variable we are invalidating the count and increasing the count value every time so this is a component which has a script style and the html and this is how we are writing the dom event handle click so when you click on this we are increasing the count so this is a component and you can import this component same as any other framework like import button component from button.svelte this is the file name here you need to put the syntax the, uh, the extension because by default javascript thing it's a typescript it's javascript so we have to put dot svelte as an extension and now this button component can be rendered in parent component same as other framework just put the angle brackets and your button component is rendered so if i remove this so first of all what you need to do you need to import that button component and then you just need to put that in the jsx tag jsx like tag but this is pure html and when you click on to this this component starts working that we have added a click action and all okay so let's uh, move forward our journey we can talk about uh, a scoped styling so let's say i have this button component okay in this button component uh, let's say i'm doing a simple p tag hello world okay this is inside a button component and here i am doing a styling for this p tag font color and i can see click zero times What happened with this? A non property font size, font color. Am I doing something wrong? Oh, sorry, it should be simply color. So, this is the color hello world, and you can see the hello world is gray out in this. Okay, and same thing what I'm doing here is inside index.js or inside appswell.js, I have the same p tag. And here I do have hello world okay and you can see the difference the style is apl not applied here because these are the scoped styles you can just put it is h1 to make it look bigger so this is your h1 and the h1 tag here because that is inside button we can move this to outside now this h1 the color is little gray out so if i just move this to a div and just wrap everything inside a div color is let's say green you can see the h1 color is applied on to this scoped style this scoped component not everywhere okay now we are going to talk about the reactive concepts okay uh, that contains a reactive declaration assignment and reactive statement what is reactive assignments so 
this simple example this is a reactive assignment we are doing here we have a count variable and on the handle click we are increasing the count okay this is a simple example of reactive assignment whenever you are doing clicking on to this this count is getting invalidated and new value is getting calculated when you, uh, let's talk about reactive declaration reactive declaration is simple we talked about the auto calculating the full name so here let's say i have a double this is the variable or multiply this is the the variable and that depends on the count and here you are increasing the count okay and here i can just print both the values multiple okay so when you click on to this you can see whenever you are updating the count let's uh, remove the button component we are not talking about it here we can just print count and multiple so okay we need button because we need to increase the counter value so you can see when i click on to this what i'm doing i'm increasing the value of count and whenever there is a uh, update in the count this multiple will be recalculated it's you can say it's kind of a reactive declaration wherever it will rerun whenever the, these values are getting changed whenever the count is updated multiple will be calculated again and you will see the updated values here okay now finally is a reactive statement you can also write a reactive statement saying that let's say reactive statement is like if statement here i can say if count is greater than equal to 10 then i wanted to alert okay not good count is high now then i can just set reset the count to zero right so what i'm doing is you keep clicking on to this and we are updating the count right count is getting reset when the value of the count is 9 yes alert and now it is reset to 0 right so this is also this is called a reactive statement this is reactive statement this is reactive declaration and this is a reactive assignment okay I will just put it reactive assignment this is reactive declaration and this is called the line number 12 is called reactive statement okay so this is a basic example of uh, showing how these reactive uh, how these how swell.js behaves with these reactive properties now let's say how we are declaring the props okay so we already have a child component here uh, we were rendering the button component so this is a button component in app.swell.js i'm rendering the button component let's say i wanted to pass some props to the button component how can i do this so i can just pass let's say uh, counter this is a property i'm sending and the value of the counter is 88 okay so i'm first of all i'm importing the button component and i'm then passing this counter property so how can i access this property in the component so what i need to do to access this property in the button dot swelt i need to declare this variable with export let counter so this will help us to access this value i will just remove this style so that we can have more space to show the values and i can print this counter value you can see i will just do the line break you can see we are getting the 80 value and this 80 value is coming from the parent component here we are passing the counter so this is like you are passing a props you can also initialize the props with the default value let's say 
I may or may not be passing the value, right? So in your component, uh, this is your button component. Here you are rendering it in the button component. I can declare the default value. Let's say if you are not passing the counter value, I'm going to initialize that value with uh, let's say 800. That's the default value. So if I am rendering it twice, and here I'm passing the count counter value 80, but in the second instance I'm not passing the props. So it will pick the default value, which is 800. Okay, you can see 800. First one is the 80. So this is the default props. Okay, another concept is let's say you are passing a simple object. So inside this, you have let's say an object uh, const user which contains couple of properties okay these two properties I wanted to send them after spreading these properties so let's say I am not passing this counter I can spread it in the same way we are doing with, with the react I can just spread it like this user and inside the button component you can access those properties now you have to declare all those properties one by one export let uh, username export let email and then you can print both the values username and email and you can see both the values are coming here I'm not in the second instance I'm not passing anything so that's why it is showing undefined undefined I will remove that instance here we are passing the user object after spreading it if the, the properties have spread it so we are going to access those as a individual properties right same as the props we pass in the react component now we'll talk about uh, like if else block and all these things because Sometimes we need to render this statement, that statement based on condition. First of all, let me clear all these things out. Okay. I just wanted to have simple count value. That is my button component and asphalt. I don't have a lot of things. These things. I will remove the styles. Here we have button component. We are not passing anything. okay we'll remove the style losing tag okay everything is clear now so now what change we are going to do is uh, we will see how we can actually first of all loop onto the elements okay so let's say i have this button component inside the button component we have like a lot of items let's say i have the variables i have the array let things and inside things i have this is an array okay and we will see how you iterate on to the array this is like basic fundamentals of swell.js we just need to understand the syntax only once and we are not going to look on to this again color is uh, let's say blue ID 2 okay this is an array we have and we have one method also function handle click because we are going to play with this data okay and this handle click and we are going to uh, reassign things after slicing it slice first element okay so we are going to first render all these things inside html and how we do it so like we have ng4 directive in angular or we do map onto the array in react similarly 
here the things are different in swell here we will do the loop but the syntax looks like some handlebar or templating engine syntax like we will do each of things as thing like things is an array we are running a loop onto that as things and the unique value is thing dot id and this will be opening and this will be closing and inside this i can access uh, the different things we have so let's say i wanted to render a child component here so what i can do is thing current equal to thing dot color so what i'm doing is i am iterating onto this array and rendering the child component and i'm passing this as a props okay so what it is complaining we will see that thing is not defined yeah we have to import this that is the first thing we have to create this component somewhere so inside script we have to import this component this is a child component we have to create thing from let's keep it lower case thing dot swelled and we will create this component this is a another child component of a button component we can create a new file okay and what this component will contain just because what it is doing it is just displaying the div with the color so we are just going to add a script and we have to declare whatever the props we are getting export let current and const initial equal to current we'll just have this variable and inside uh, this p tag we'll just have span tags with the background color whatever we are getting you can also add a uh, inline style something like this so style uh, background color is uh, initial i think we added additional quotes this is background color which is which is dynamically set with the initial value and we have another is the current okay cannot have duplicate keys in for each id okay because i think in the array we are passing the id 1 and 2 thing dot id i was putting thing dot something else this should be thing dot id and we are passing this component okay so now id1 color is blue this is what we are passing to the child component and this is my thing component it should be able to export let current and current equal to initial it should be able to put the span so here we can put some label initial and current so they can be seen on the browser and you can see things are happening and you can also add some more styling i mean it is just an example of how to iterate on to the elements and uh, how to pass the the props to the child component we can have some props and you can see this now we can also add an on click event okay at the dom event which is going to splice right which is going to remove the elements from the button component so here we have let's say couple of more colors i'll just update the ids three four uh 
okay and we are going to have one button so let's add one button which will have on click action which is going to call this handle click method and here click to remove elements things dot slice are we doing it correctly so this is things let things equal to this or what you can do is you can reassign this i mean you splice this assign it to a new variable and then assign it to this or if you want to have it as a constant then you cannot reassign this thing so keep it let and here if i reload this i will see i will see four boxes one is the white which you cannot see uh, let's put it as a pink so this example is talking about uh, how we are passing the props how we are dealing with the dom events using on click how we are rendering the child component inside a loop and how we are iterating onto the elements okay there is a white okay this is how it is working so this is just a simple example what we have covered here is the for each block right how we are looping on to that how we are writing the dom events using on click and updating the this is the reactive assignment we have we are reassigning things with the new values and that is again getting rendered something like this okay uh, rest is if else block we can see in the code now let's talk about more about dom events i mean we can write dom events as inline currently we are writing dom events like on click similarly there are other events like on mouse move or something like that i think we should be able to see other dom events it's not getting auto complete but these are like all uh, javascript events on mouse move you can define the method okay mouse move and you can define this method here function on mouse mood sorry for the typo so this is how i'm just going to talk about like this is how you define the dom events you can write the inline handlers inline handlers in that case you will just put your whatever the you are going to execute in the same syntax you don't need to write a, a separate function for that okay and now we'll talk about component events so we know how to pass the data from the one component to another component similarly we can talk about is uh, how you can send a callback event from your child component to the parent component so let's say this is a simple example right i i'm inside a loop i'm rendering the things component let's say when you are clicking on to these uh, spent tags you wanted to send a event to the parent component so what you can do uh, let's go to your things component why it is complaining on click okay we didn't close this yeah this is fine now we go to our child component which is things dot svelte so it is the the component communication is same same as react or angular you try you pass the component as a input properties here we are passing them and declaring these exports here you can also send an event to the parent component let's say i wanted to add a on click event so what i will do is so in the dom event your child component can dispatch events and how that will happen is you will let's say i am doing on click event on this and i'm not going to handle this event i'm going just going to send this event to my parent component so say hi this is the method name inside this function i will declare this method say hi and here the i i love the syntax in swell because 
it explicitly is saying okay i am not declare i am not defining this method i am dispatching this method here so for that we have to use the create event dispatcher in svelte js so here we will create a event dispatcher you need to import a create event dispatcher from svelte and create a dispatch uh, variable which is create event dispatcher and using this you can do a dispatch so from the readability point of view you already know that you are dispatching the message event with this data and here you can send any kind of data message you are sending hello world right now you need to handle this message event which is coming from child component so what you can write at the button component level you will say okay this is the the event is coming from this child component so on message because this is the event you are going to receive from the child component and you are going to hand whenever it is coming up you will handle this event like this message created message arrived message created whatever so parent component will handle that event coming from the component event i mean these are called component event because child component is generating that event and sending the data to the parent component so this is the event and here you can get the value i think event dot detail dot message this is how you will extract the value you can see i am getting that value when you click on to the first button because on the first span tag we added the on click let's look uh, on the syntax again this is on click say hi say hi is dispatching the message event and here we are handling that message event on the button component okay these are called uh, component events and dom events we have already seen this is how we define the, the dom events that is there, there is one more thing is event forwarding let's say the child component to does not want to uh, handle that event so in that case they can use a uh, event uh, forwarding what they can do is so inside event forwarding they will declare the events but they will not handle it they will send it to the upper component then the upper component will send it to further upper component let's say a button is sending sorry this things component is sending this on click i which is sending this on message event so button component does not want to handle it what uh, we can just simply say is okay button component does not want to handle it in the outer component so they can just simply do is on message okay so things is the innermost component then button component then app component if you do not want it to handle this you just write on message that means this on message uh, is getting going to be handled at the button at the app component level so i'm not handling this uh, this event coming from things component then app component has to handle that because obviously one of the component has to handle that so from this button component on message i can handle that say hi let's say it can be anything and simply we can do console.log this is event object i mean not the the dom event object event dot detail dot message so we'll get this data to the topmost component this is same as the event propagation you send this event from the things component your button component does not want to handle it so you just uh, forward this using on message and it will go to the app component similarly uh, this is called uh, component event forwarding this is component event forwarding similarly you can also do the dom event forwarding the dom event forwarding is the same concept inside dom event forwarding uh, you have let's say things dot svelte and on to this you don't want it to handle it here just simply do on click i mean this syntax is really interesting so span you did you want to do on click but you don't want it to handle it here that means your parent component 
must handle this so inside your app component or the parent component you have to handle the on click event coming from the child component so if things is not handling inside a button component you have to add the on click event on click handle click and this is how you will do it okay so let's talk about the the binding for the binding i need to clear out this example so we can start from something fresh uh, we don't need things component we need just app component and the button component okay so we already have seen that uh, input binding like you can write the simple input text field text input and you can track how the value is getting propagated in the text value so let's say if i do this simply variable is a let name is empty and here i do input so here i can just do a bind value and bind value with name input type text so whenever you keep changing this value this name value is also getting updated i can print that here right this is like a two way data binding we are doing you are updating this bind property and that is getting also populated here so uh, i mean these are like all form based component and how we do the the binding text area input input text field we can talk about all these things uh, let's see i have this simple component so to 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 So in this text area, you are passing some uh, some component. So what you can do is you can uh, also create a marked component that is actually a, I think it's library. So I have imported this library. What it is doing is, it is compiling uh, the italic. It is compiling this content as an HTML. Okay, so this is how it is working. We are importing the mark library. And we can actually compile the text, which is having some words are italic, some words are words are bold. This is not like pure HTML, right? Whatever you are typing here, and it is able to compile. This is just an example from Swell.js website. Okay, now we can talk about the life cycle. Like every component has some kind of a life cycle methods available, right? So first, I will just take a look onto one example and talk about that example and let's see if we are able to get that okay so what do we have here so we are talking about on mount uh, lifecycle method so whenever the component is mounting we can use it to fetch the data this is same as component in mount right what we are doing is on mount is doing a sync await logic and trying to fetch the some data from somewhere so this is just a api call and it is using just a fetch from the window object and here we got all the photos so this is an array and if we are able to get all the photos then it should be able to iterate onto that because photos is an array and this is how we are doing the for each 
loop i mean uh, the loop onto that array each photos as photo and then we are just generating the thumbnail so if we got the photos otherwise we will just show the loading i think we didn't receive the photos from this api call that's why we are just seeing the loading so there can be another state like if there is an error then show the error message or something like that so we can just replace this with uh, something else which can give us the the photos this url is not returning the things which we needed okay but for the life cycle example this is enough what we are doing here is we are calling this method on mount on mount is getting called on the 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 application initialization okay and it is calling this and it is making the data available for the component on destroy is another method which happens like okay whenever the component is getting destroyed then this method is getting called okay so how do we talk about this example so there is another method you can import from Svelte. That is on destroy. What it does is you can use this on destroy method to clear out the resources. This is same as component will will uh, unmount. and let's say you are creating interval that interval you wanted to clear out so you can do a clear interval let's say i'm creating an interval here const interval equal to this once the component is clear we have to call clear interval and we have to pass the, the interval id interval instance so those kind of things you can do on these life cycle methods and why it is complaining this callback is not defined okay i'm going to do something on the set interval which is nothing but simple message console.log milliseconds i am talking about 3000 millisecond okay so whenever component gets destroyed it will clear out the interval like timeout a uh, clear timeout same similarly we are creating interval using set interval we have to clear this otherwise uh, what happens is the, this can cause a memory leak if you are creating any event listener you have to clear those event listener you have to remove those event listener all those things you have to do here okay there are other life cycle methods is like before update and after update those are also coming for, from swelt and these we will talk about with real examples when we talk about some real application okay so these are like a different uh, core building blocks now the rest all the things is we should talk about some application like simple pokemon app and there we should use all these parent child component passing props handling the dom events handling the component event and passing the data between exchanging the data between components running a loop on to the array of objects which you have received playing with these dom events changing the data and uh, writing these reactive statements reactive variables and adding the the reactive declarations so that we can create a watcher these this is like a watcher wherever the value is getting changed these things are getting recalculated so we have almost covered most of the building blocks of the swelt js syntax now what we can do is before talking about the store and some advanced concepts how to do the api integration and all let's talk about some basic applications from that we will understand how all these things are working together